Can a color make you look older? Absolutely. And it's not just because the color is unflattering. Sometimes a color can make a pair of shoes look older or a dress look older. Stay tuned as I tell you all the ways that the wrong colors can age you. This is Netta, welcome to my channel. My whole goal, the whole reason I'm here on YouTube is to help you build a wardrobe that gets you out the door looking and feeling your best every single day. Helps you feel special, helps you feel beautiful, gives you that energy and that um, positivity that gets us through the day. Because let's face it, clothes and the way that we feel in the way that we look, you know, our hair and our, and our beauty, like all of those things really play a role in our mood and our mood impacts everything and everyone around us. It's one of the reasons I'm so passionate about this. It's not just clothes, it's not just shoes, it's how all of those things come together to make us look and feel our best. So um, one of the ways I do this is through a style program, my Agile style program. If you're interested in hearing more about it, I'm gonna put a link in the description box below because we have an amazing community of women who are all working on this together and we would love to have you join us. So today I'm really excited to be working for the first time with a brand called Rose Forever. Now, I have to show you this because I was so excited, okay. Hold it up over here. This is called the Dome from Rose Forever. So it comes in this white, um, just kind of like cylindrical shape. I think this is so elegant and so subtle. This is the one I chose because this reminds me of the roses that I had at my wedding. Now the roses I had at my wedding were dark red roses. They were called Black Magic Roses and but I had these topiary designs and this this sort of shaped design that I love, I love, I love. So this to me is such a reference and it, like it just brings back such happy memories from um, getting married at the Breakers in 2001 and all of the roses. I had 30,000 Black Magic roses at my wedding. And so roses are near and dear to my heart. They are my favorite flower. And I just think they're so iconic and they're the iconic romantic flower. So if you're looking to drop a hint for Mother's Day because Mother's Day is coming up or maybe your birthday is coming up or maybe an anniversary is coming up. I, I highly recommend these. So Rose Forever is a brand that was based, uh, that's based in New York. It was founded in 2019. And these roses are natural. They're real roses. They're real roses, but they use essential oils to preserve the roses so that they last for over a year. So everything like the packaging and, and the essential oils, everything is natural and vegan in their process. Even their boxes, they have these faux suede boxes that are vegan. They have these velvet boxes that are vegan. They have crystal packaging. They're absolutely beautiful. And these roses are, are basically arranged by floral artists and preserved with essential oils so that they last and you can enjoy them for a year. I'm, I'm, I'm obsessed. I love, love, love getting fresh flowers, but you know, they do die, right? So these will last you for a really long time. I think it just makes a beautiful gift for Mother's Day or like I said, a birthday or an anniversary if you wanna drop a hint. I do have a code NETA20 for 20% off and um, I highly recommend checking out their website. There's really something for everybody. There's like, like I said, crystal packaging, there's velvet, there's marble, there's faux suede and they're just beautiful. And there's a, a huge assortment of colors. If red roses aren't your thing, there's an, a big assortment of colored roses and, and even the, the ones that are colored are all colored um, using natural methods and techniques and ingredients. So um, and they're allergen free. They're just, they're just beautiful. They're just beautiful. So I'm so happy with my roses and so excited to be partnering with Rose Forever on today's video. Okay, now I wanna get into the main topic of the video and that's colors that will age you. Now I've done a lot of color videos in the past and so much of this obviously is gonna be based on your personal coloring, right? So some colors are gonna be aging on some people and gorgeous on other people and vice versa. But there are some guidelines, there are some rules, there are some generalities that we can discuss when it comes to choosing colors that are going to, to really bring out our best. And I will tell you this as somebody who fought, 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 fought my coloring for a really long time. I was like, I can wear pale blush pink. I can wear dusty colors. They don't make my skin look gray. And then, you know, you turn a corner and you realize that 
I need a little bit more intentionality in my color choices to bring out my personal best and so that when I look in the mirror, I feel like I look rested and awake and alive and not like I need extra concealer under my eyes just to get through the day, right? So color becomes more important as we get older because that flattery and that that color close to our face becomes a more important part of looking and feeling our best. And I do a full color analysis for everybody in the Ageless Style program. And if you've had a color analysis in the past, you, 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 know, you know that there are going to be colors that are going to bring out your best and colors that are not going to bring out your best. But I want to encourage you to look at color, um, to take a step back and look at color in a slightly different way. Now, there are three different ways, three different categories that we can we can put colors into. One of the categories is temperature, right? Whether a color is warm or cool or neutral. So, you know, uh, uh, and obviously an orange or yellow is going to be warm and a blue and purple is going to be cool. And then there are, you know, there are neutral of all, um, almost all the shades. There's going to be a neutral version that's going to be in the middle and that's going to be a balance of warm and cool elements. So that's one way to look at color. Another way to look at color is in terms of clearness versus softness. These are categories that I use in my color typing system. But are, is your coloring clear? That means it's bright. That means it's vibrant. That means it's not blended with any colors. For example, if you do, do you look best in a red that is a pure vibrant red that has no other colors mixed in with it? Or do you look better in a red that is a softer red, a more muted red that has some gray mixed into it? So clearness, to bright, you know, clear and bright on one side to soft and muted on the other. Like there's a spectrum there, right? Where are you in the clear to soft spectrum? Now, the last way to look at color is light to dark. So obviously pale shades, you know, light shades, are often going to be colors that have a lot of white mixed into them. So the pastel shades that we know. And then the dark shades are often gonna be colors that have a little bit of black mixed into them. So the deep tones, jewel tones, dark neutrals. So, you know, when you look at color and you look at the colors that bring out your best, you wanna ask yourself, which of these categories is most important for you to look your best in color? Is it is the temperature of the color the, the biggest criteria, the biggest um, factor in determining whether a color looks good on you? Is it the lightness to darkness of a color? Is that the biggest factor in determining whether a color looks good on you? Or is it the clearness to softness of a color that's going to determine whether the color looks good on you? With me, for example, it's the clear to soft ratio of a color. I can look, uh, I, I can pull off some lighter colors. I can pull off warm and cool colors being a neutral person. But if a color is muted or soft, it's going to wash me out. And it's not, it's not going to, to bring out my best. It's going to make my skin look gray. It's going to make me look muddy. It's going to make me have to work harder with my makeup to get the desired effect and to look and feel like rested and awake and healthy and all the things that we want, right? Okay, so that's my overview of color. Now we're going to talk about color when it comes to specific items. And, you know, this has come across my, I mean, you know, being a personal stylist, often I can recommend an item in one color and tell you not to try it in another color because color makes a huge difference with especially with borderline items in terms of how modern, how cool, how trendy, how fresh, how fabulous they look, or how the opposite of all those things they look. So it, often the difference is the color. But let's start by looking at, first of all, the color black. So my first tip is a color that can age you, black may be a color that can age you if it doesn't suit you. Now. Soft women, the women that can wear the muted colors, the dusty colors, the um, blended colors really well, make up a large percentage of the American population. This might be you if you have the same coloring as someone like the stunning Blake Lively. If your coloring is medium and muted and neutral, chances are black is not your best color. And as we get older, again, we want to lean into the colors that work for us the best. How I overcame this hump is that I decided to to pick the 
colors that I do love rather than, and it was a mental shift, right? I'm going to go for the colors that I do love rather than um, talking about the colors that I can't wear. Like rather than saying I can't wear blush, I can say I get to wear hot pink. I get to wear bright red. I get to wear, you know, these colors rather than I can't wear these colors. So I'm going to encourage you if you have medium muted neutral coloring like Blake Lively, I'm going to pop up a picture of her here um, in black. Does she look stunning? Absolutely she looks stunning because she's a stunning human being. But is black her best color? I would say no. And she can pull off anything she wants because she's young enough. But as she gets older, she's probably going to find that she's going to veer away from black a little bit and maybe more towards colors that are really going to bring out her beauty. So this second picture, I think this is from the Met Gala. And you can just see the difference in how she looks in these medium like gorgeous medium rose shades that she's wearing in this outfit and how it just brings out the the beautiful warmth in her skin tone it makes her look lively lively that's funny it makes her look fresh it makes her look um youthful like it's just absolutely beautiful on her so i think that the difference between even someone as stunning and as young as blake lively the difference between her in black and in these medium more muted colors is pretty remarkable so if black doesn't suit you, it does not need to be your dark neutral. Now, you know, my mantra is that almost anything that comes in black, unfortunately, not everything, but almost everything that comes in black also comes in another dark neutral. So maybe your best dark neutral is charcoal, or maybe it's navy, or maybe it's chocolate. And some of it, unfortunately, it, some colors are going to be easier to find certain years than other years. Like maybe chocolate is trending one year and you see a lot of chocolate, then I would grab it if chocolate is your best dark neutral, or navy, or charcoal. But pick a different dark neutral if black is not your best dark neutral. And really build your wardrobe around it. It can look just as elegant. It can look just as polished can look just as upscale classic timeless all the all of the adjectives that we associate with black would also work for any dark neutral and if it's more flattering for you it's going to be more beautiful for you okay so that's my rant about black and now I'm going to go to the other side of the color spectrum and my next tip is to beware of pastel dresses as somebody who loves pastels loves pastels loves pastels and and i have a very feminine style and i absolutely wish i could wear pastels um i'm not talking about pastels in terms of your personal coloring right here i'm talking about in terms of how modern or not modern they can make an item look and at, like i said as a pastel lover um i i would caution you to be careful because some styles if they are border line are going to look older if you put them in a pastel color especially those beautiful dusty colors I was talking about dusty rose dusty lilac dusty blue dusty green uh, dusty uh, lavender dusty yellow they are all gonna look more mature on certain dresses so I'm gonna hold up and show you this dress you know I was talking about the mature evening gown this is an example of a mature evening gown here it is in this pale pink color and it looks very frumpy to me very frumpy very matronly very mature looking it's this you know chiffon and lace quintessential mother of the bride or mature evening gown look that they that they want to sell every woman who's over 50 in this dusty rose or this light pink this pastel pink color it is not a pretty or a modern dress but put this dress in navy and suddenly it's a much, much, much better dress. Is it like my absolute favorite dress in perfection and wonderful and perfect and 100%? No, but it's a lot better of a choice in a sophisticated dark neutral than it is in a pastel color. So we have to pick pastel color, we have to pick modern shapes when we're looking at pastel colors. If you love pastels and if you've got light coloring or soft coloring or cool coloring and can wear pastels really well, then I would encourage you to find pastels in modern shapes because that's how you're gonna get the look where you've got the colors that flatter you and you've still got a modern contemporary look. But at any time a style or a silhouette or a shape or an item is a little bit borderline, choose a dark neutral instead of a pastel. Okay, I'm going to show you um, uh, the same dress. This is from JJ's house. It's a popular retailer for like wedding and special event dresses. I'm going to show you the same dress in different colors. So just to further to drive home this point, right? Okay, here's the dress in um, a pale pink color. Here it's like in a taupey color. 
here it's in lilac and then in like a seafoam green so all the pastel and some light kind of muted neutrals right not a cute dress not a great dress is it awful no but it, it's not it's not a great dress it's not a dress i would like if you were telling me can you help me pick a dress for a special event this would not be the dress but put the dress in wine one of my favorite darker colors a jewel tone color like this wine color it could be emerald it could be teal it could be sapphire or cobalt um, or plum but any jewel tone and the dress is going to look so much more sophisticated and so much more modern and so much more flattering now i'm also showing the dress here in black so black or a really dark navy charcoal chocolate 100% better than that same dress in those pastel shades. So it's not the color or the dress alone. It's the combination of the two. And that's the rule I want you, or the, 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 the principle that I want you to take away from this video. If you only remember one thing, a lot of times people say, is this print matronly? I'm like, well, it depends on what the print is on sometimes. I know, I wish it wasn't so. Yes, there are some prints that right out of the box are totally matronly. And then there are some that are probably never going to be matronly. But many, many, many times the answer is it depends. And it depends on the combination of the print and the item. And in this case, it depends on the combination of the color and the item. Let me know if you want me to do a separate video on, on how prints translate across different pieces and how the same print can look fabulous on one item and not so fabulous on another item. Okay, let's look at yellow dresses for a minute just because I can't, you know, stop talking about this point. Now, I'm, I'm going to show you two modern looking yellow dresses. They may not be your style. I totally get it. They may not be your style, but these are modern yellow dresses. Yellow is obviously a pastel color. It, it could also be a neon or bright color, but these are mostly soft yellow dresses, like pale yellow dresses. So this first one is a very simple sleeveless um, or short sleeve, sleeveless sheath from Mango. Um, it's a little bit of a shorter dress, but like a very simple, very clean, very um, minimalist sort of take on a yellow dress. This other dress is like a flowy, I think this is Vince Camuto, a little bit of a flowy, roughly easy to wear kind of casual dress. Both in yellow, both of these work, they're both modern dresses in a pastel color. Now let's look at some not so modern dresses in pastel colors. This first one with the little asymmetrical hemline, this lace detail, um, not a great dress in yellow and this dress looks even worse because it's in yellow again if this dress was in black would it be better absolutely would it be awesome no but it would be better um this yellow lace one with the weird hemline and all this stuff going on not cute pastel and laces in general in general there are lots of there's exceptions to almost every rule but pastel and lace together are really one of the clinchers that you're like oh if you're gonna do lace a lot of times you want it to be neutral or you want it to be jewel toned or bold colored. Like it's the pastel lace combination that sometimes can be a killer. And then, you know, so those are those are two mature examples of yellow dresses. And then of course yellow can look super sweet and very, very, very youthful. I love this little dress. This would be so cute. I wish one of my little, my, one of my da teenage daughters would wear it. Um, but this little, this dress is obviously, I think is very, very youthful. And I, I, and that person that sometimes you guys will say, oh my gosh, that's quite risky for a 53 year old. I'm willing to take lots of risks and to wear a lot of things that some people may perceive as being youthful. This is, this to me is, is a line I won't cross. It looks like a, a little girl's dress. Um, very, very cute, but not for me. So, you know, yellow can look really sweet and really young and little girly. It can also look like it, all the, all the pastels can fall into these these same categories, or they can look matronly, immature, and frumpy. So we want to pick modern silhouettes, especially when we're looking at pastels. Okay, next I want to talk about nude shoes. A few years ago, somebody said, in, in one of my Facebook groups, said, are all nude shoes frumpy? I was like, what, what? What do you mean nude shoes being frumpy? Then I started looking, I'm like, oh my gosh. They have a point. Some nude shoes are frumpy. Some nude shoes are amazing and they're leg lengthening and they're they're flattering and all the things, but some of them are not cute. So let me just give you a couple of tips when it comes to choosing nude shoes. The first tip is choose suede over patent 
and I love patent leather, I'm a big patent leather person, but when you're looking at a shoe that is borderline and it's also nude, so it's, it's like maybe it's got a kitten heel, maybe it ve like it could be possibly potentially frumpy, then choose it in a suede over a patent. And I'm gonna show you this, this shoe is from Nina. And I'm going to show it to you in same exact shoe, pretty much the same exact color in suede and patent. Let me know if you see the same difference that I see. In suede, it looks a lot more modern and a lot more fresh to me than it does in patent. And I will tell you suede is a spring and summertime material now as well. It's now considered seasonless. Um, patent works a lot better in Florida because it rains a lot, but you know. I, that that's neither here nor there. We're talking about the style of the shoe and the suede, in my opinion, and the style looks better. Now, if you're looking at borderline styles, now I told you, if you're looking at borderline dresses, be careful of pastels, right? If you're looking at borderline shoes, be careful about nude borderline shoes. So if the style is, eh, then you might want to look at another color other than nude. So this pair from Franco Sardo, this is that quintessential kind of sort of frumpier ballet flat style that's been trending the last couple of years. It is kind of harder to wear. A lot of people find these very comfortable. It reminds me of the Everlane Day Glove. Um, that sort of ballet flat style. Um, in nude, that's a grandma shoe. In nude, that's a grandma shoe. But like a hip minimalist grandma, but still a grandma shoe. Like it's not really a flattering looking shoe. Now that may be more your personal style, like the more minimalist personal style, but I will say if you like this minimalist style of footwear, choose it in a different color other than nude. Now I'm gonna show you the same shoe in fuchsia and metallic. It's, is it still my absolute favorite shoe on the planet? No, but it looks so much better in a bright, bold color than it does in that nude. So it's the combination of style and color that's gonna, gonna trip us up in some of these cases, right? I'm gonna show you another, I think I've shown this shoe before. This is from Linea Paolo. It's a ballet flat with like a little little chain detail on the toe. Here it is in, in, in nude. And it's, uh, uh, it's not bad, it's just, but it's not great. I don't love that detail. I don't think it's like the most modern or fresh looking detail. Like if it was without that detail on the top, I think it would be a great shoe. But look at how much better this shoe looks in this medium brown color. And I will tell you, if you're in doubt about any nude shoe, almost any borderline shoe looks better in this medium brown than it does in nude or even in off-white but if you're if you're like i don't know what color to get this shoe in in nude or in brown i would say go for the brown because the right nude shoe is is a game changer and is amazing but the wrong nude shoe as i'm showing you is really not good so but that medium brown color is so versatile and unless you are you've got very cool coloring it is the one of the most neutral neutrals that exists i mean you can wear it with black you can wear it with brown you can wear it with um you can wear it with navy you can wear it with white you can wear it with everything and it looks great it's a great summertime neutral so choose the brown over the nude in that case for sure okay let's look at this sandal um, i don't remember who makes this sandal but it's a platform sandal and here i'm going to show you the sandal in nude and it's ah, it's okay and you may prefer that that ankle strap in that nude because it is going to lengthen your legs better than having an ankle strap in another color but i feel like the sandal is a little bit borderline um it's not bad but it's not fabulous in the nude but in turquoise if you're comfortable with a bright strap across your ankle in turquoise suede this looks so much cooler and so much prettier and so much more modern so much more fresh so really consider if you're looking at a shoe and you're like i don't know if this shoe looks good look at it and one of the one of the, just a, 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 an overall tip when shopping online or shopping period is to look at an item in every color if you're if you're looking at a dress online and it comes in 24 colors i want you to look at it in all 24 colors because you're going to see different like you know amazon will always have all the colors jj's house will always have all the colors you're going to see different details in every single color you're go going to get a completely different perspective on the dress if you look at it in all the colors um, you're not going to see anything on a black dress online but if you can look at it in white and beige and pink and red and purple and blue and you're gonna you're gonna get a much clearer idea of what you're buying before you buy it and make fewer mistakes when you're shopping online so the same thing with shoes you want to look at it in all the colors and decide okay which of these colors in this style looks the best to me and also obviously works with my wardrobe and my coloring
Okay, um, I'm gonna show you another example. Um, these are two different nudes. Now, I'm really, really happy that they have broadened the definition of nude, and there's a nude out there for every skin tone, um, including me with my medium olive skin. There are nudes for you if you've got very fair skin, if you've got very um, dark skin, there's a nude for everybody out there now. And it used to be like, I remember, you know, higher end brands um, were the ones that kicked off this, like Christian Louboutin came out with all the different nudes. Um, and there are brands that specifically cater to darker skin tones. So I love that. Um, but we want to pick the right nude when we are looking at a nude shoe, we wanna pick the right nude for our individual coloring. And I'm gonna show you two different nudes here. The first one is called Latte, and the second is more of a rosy nude. These are both the same Nina pump that I showed earlier, but Latte or um, a rosy nude. Now you want to pick a nude that's gonna blend with your skin tone a little bit better. One is a little bit more of a greenish nude, so a little bit more for an, a light olive skin tone, and the other is more for a light, um, like pink tone skin tone. So you, you, you really, when you look at nudes, you want to look for one that's going to blend really well with your skin tone. Okay, often if you're just gonna blindly pick a color, I would say, um, and if you've got fair skin tone and it's 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 neutral, I would say go for a rosy nude over a greenish nude, unless the greenish nude suits your skin tone better. But I like the way that the rosy nudes look a little better in the lighter shades. Okay. Final thing, I think this is the final thing, choose brown over black when you're looking at a clunky shoe. Clunky shoe, chunky shoe. We've already cautioned, I've already cautioned you against neutrals for some of the borderline shoes. I will also caution you against black for some of the borderline shoes. So I, you know, I've been talking about brown and how brown can be a great alternative to black for a variety of reasons. But I'm gonna show you this, this sandal from Tom's. I showed this in the sandals that will age you video and I even showed the brown one as, as a borderline style. But I'm gonna show it to you in black. And this is so heavy and thick and the straps are so wide. It's really going to make your, your legs look bigger, heavier, chunkier. It's gonna make a really hard line across the ankle that's gonna shorten your legs. Um, but in brown, so much better, especially in this light brown, especially if that's a little bit closer to your skin tone, it's gonna blend better, it's gonna be less chunky, it's gonna be less bulky, and it's gonna be less, un less unflattering on the foot. So when in doubt, um, choose brown over black, especially for sandals. If you want to do a black sandal, make the black sandal strappy. Strappy black sandals are great, chunky black sandals, not so great. I said it out loud, that's my opinion. They are going to make your legs look like you're, you're in, in you know big black boxes, um, rather than blending with your skin tone and accentuating the length of your legs. Okay, final tip, this is, I think this is the final tip. Yeah, this is the, no, no, almost. Oh, we're almost there. Um, when in doubt, pick a trendy color. So if you're looking at a really classic style of anything, a dress, a shoe, a bag, a pair of earrings, whatever, pick a color that is really of the moment and looks fresh and trendy. All of this, the exception is, if it doesn't, the color doesn't suit you, then don't pick that color. But pick a trendy color that also works for you, as opposed to a classic color when you're looking at something that's borderline or that's classic. So for example, this pump, I think this is also from Nina. It's a little peep toe satin kitten heeled pump. This could look a little bit mature, a little bit maybe too classic um, in the navy. It's, I mean, it's, it's beautiful, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's definitely like a very kind of classic look. And you're like, oh, okay, that's a nice shoe for a mother of the bride to wear at a wedding. But you put it in this bold, beautiful um, leaf green color that is everywhere this year, and all of a sudden, that's a trendy, fun, funky shoe that really updates and upgrades a lot of your your outfits and the only difference is the color so when in doubt or if you're looking at a piece that's really classic or you're looking at a piece that's borderline choose a trendy color over a neutral or classic color okay now the reverse for dresses can sometimes be true so if an item is at all borderline when it comes to dresses choose it in a sophisticated dark neutral or a dual tone. Why? Because you see less of the detail when a dress is dark. You see less of the detail. So if a dress has has details on it that are eh, 
Get it in a dark color because you won't see those uh, details. You'll only see them in the lighter colors. That's why I tell you to look at the dresses in all the colors so you can get a really accurate representation of what the dress is gonna look like. So here's a dress. I actually really like this dress. The neckline might be a little hard for some people to wear, but I love this dress and I think it's very sophisticated. Um, and does it work in, in the pale pink? Yeah, it does work in the pale pink, but I think it's a little bit borderline in the pale pink because maybe because of the sleeve length and the high neck and everything. But in that navy color, that dress is fabulous. It's classic, it's chic, it's modern. It's got some really, like it's got really cool details and a cool shape to it. And it just looks like a beautiful dress in navy. And it's, it's still nice and pink, but it's better in navy. So if you're trying to minimize the details of a potentially frumpy item, choose that item in a dark neutral. So I hope this was helpful. I covered a lot. I covered shoes, I covered dresses. I covered overall coloring and really kind of looking at your coloring, being strategic about how you use color to bring out your personal best in your wardrobe. If you want to see more videos like this, I am happy to show you. I have so many more examples. I have so many more examples of things that look better in some colors and in other colors, in some patterns versus other patterns. Let me know in the comments if this is something that you want to see more of. Give this video a like if you like it, and don't forget to subscribe. If you haven't subscribed already, like we are, things are going really fast around here and I'm having so much fun um, just talking to you guys in the comments, talking to you guys in my private Facebook group, which by the way is linked below. Um, and you know, basically just creating this content for you week after week. It just, I'm so blessed to be able to do this. Um, I have mentioned in the past, I'm on Like to Know It now, finally. Took me an, uh, long enough. I just was resisting it for a while and now I'm like, why? I love it. So if, if you want to follow me, Netta Manly Style on Like to Know It, if you have that app, it allows you to follow influencers and easily shop some of the things that we share with you. Um, I will also link that in the description box. All you have to do is click on the word more and the description box opens up and it just is it, everything that I talk about in this video, including a blog post for every video is linked there. So love you guys. I hope that you enjoy this video and I will see you in the next one.